afterwards. Something really special happens when the, the church becomes a community. And uh, that's not always the case. Um, the church can be a group of people, a, a group of people in society, but a group of people is not going to bring the witness and the, the sense of God to the wider community that God wants us to do. Um, one of the things that God said to us, and uh, through Jesus, he said, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth, and we've been looking at that over the last few weeks, what that really means, to be a witness in the community. And I looked up the community, uh, community in various uh, dictionaries, in various uh, 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 encyclopedias and what all the paraphernalia, just to get the real, real correct meaning. And community is a is a number of people who have the same value, same interest, same ideal, but they are joined together by that thing. So it's not just a loose group of people, it is a people, uh, a large number of people in society who are united over a central truth or central values. And uh, I, I, while I was away a few weeks ago, um, Mags gave me some news and she said, there's somebody in the church who's bought you a new Bible. I was overjoyed because they, they said, it's no good, Pastor Paul's Bible is falling to pieces. I could assure you at the time I wasn't falling to pieces, but my, my Bible surely was falling to pieces. And they'd looked and said, Pastor Paul needs a new Bible. And you know, I was thinking of getting a new Bible. Seriously. And they bought me this new Bible, and it's the New Century version, and it is fantastic. It's absolutely lovely. And when I was thinking, I took it to Romania with me, and when I was thinking, I was thinking, the Lord really impressed upon my heart that, that the church has to become a community of believers before it can really have an influence and effect in an area. And when I went, to, I went to my Bible, and I went to Acts 2, 41 to 47, the birth of the church is in the book of Acts. The day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. That's where the church started. It's God's idea, not man's. And all the way through that chapter, you come to verses 41 through to 47. Let me read it. This is the New International Version. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread, that's communion, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many signs and wonders performed by the apostles. All the believers were together. Please say that with me, together. Great. Hold that thought. The believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property, possessions. They gave to those in need. Every day, please say that with me, every day. Every day they continued to meet together. In the temple courts, they broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who should be saved. What a powerful reading. And on the, on the top of um, the, the narrative there, on the, on the passage uh, of that scripture from verse 41 through to 47, it says in my new Bible... It says, the church becomes a community. And I thought, wow, that's really special, you know. When the church becomes a community, really powerful things will start to happen. It's a big key. It's a big key for us in society when the church take up the role that God wants us to have of being a community in society a community that is different because we hold to the values of the Lord Jesus Christ wherever we are in the broader society. We are being salt and we are being light. And the wonderful thing about this Bible, I looked at this Bible, it's wonderful. And I looked and thought, it's big print. And I thought, well, hang, I'm not that old, but I mean... I appreciate the, the boldness of the letters, and it was, you know, it's just what I need. My next one's probably Braille, but it's, 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 it's fantastic to have it. And I've been really blessed with that. And, and this morning, I want to speak on what that really, really means. The reason why I say that is because religion 
Empty religion has done the church a disservice over the years. In fact, religion on itself, on its own, has put more people off Jesus than it ever brought to Jesus. In fact, religion hasn't brought anyone to Jesus. Because religion is empty on its own without a relationship with a one who died and rose again and who lives within us called Jesus Christ. That is the essence of Christianity. I'll be honest with you, I, you know me, I'm not a religious person. Mags will tell you, I've never been religious in my life. Religious is really off-putting to me. Religion is boring to me. Religion is tedious to me. Religion doesn't say anything to me. It's deadness, it's decay. It's got nothing attractive about it to me. All the attraction to me comes from somebody who died and rose again and empowers my life every day as a Christian and has, has rose again from the dead and has promised one day that he will come back for us and has promised us eternal life in his name forever and ever. That is pretty empowering. That's pretty good stuff. Religion will never give me that. Religion will never give you that. And, 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 and that's one of the things. And people talk about, you know, I was talking to some non-Christians the other day at the wedding. They couldn't believe this was a church building. Do you know why? We haven't got a steeple. We certainly haven't got a graveyard. <laughs> Amen. A cemetery. Or a mortuary. Amen. Uh, because this is a place where there's life. So it doesn't have to have all those things to be a church. Isn't it funny the way people think? Uh, and, and I just love it when the life of Jesus Christ overtakes the ordinary stuff. And I'll come to it in a moment because it really is what shapes and makes the church what it should be. Not what it has become. Do you get what I mean? And over the years I feel that religion has blighted the true church of Jesus Christ. We have some great churches in Manchester that are alive and kicking, praise God. They're really doing things for God. And, and, and I feel that religiousness has become stale, powerlessness, boring, empty, all those things that people now have associated with church. And I spoke yesterday and they couldn't believe it, they couldn't believe it. And they said, does this place, do, 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 do you fill this place? I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. He says, you want to come to our All Nations Day? I said, we can hardly fit them in now. Next, next year, I said, we're booking the Lowry Centre, which seats 1,700 people. I, I want to tell you, that. listen, I was speaking to the speaker who's coming next year to that, Alan Scott from Belfast. And he's coming, we are booking the Lowry Centre next year. Are you up for that church? With all our satellite churches in Manchester, we're going to do that. We're going to do, it's going to be, and we're going to really, really make a way for Jesus Christ next year. But we need to keep on being a community, not a group. Okay? And, and unfortunately, you see, the church has become known more for what you can't do than what you can do. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, oh, you can't do this, oh, you can't do that. You can't. Why don't we talk about what we can do? Well, I want to tell you now, on the authority of God's word, that in the church... You can worship Christ in spirit and in truth. You can come here and hear the Bible taught in relevant, authentic, sincere and genuine ways that are faithful to what Jesus preached and taught. You can have a life of freedom, forgiveness, faith and devotion in Jesus' name like Ria was telling us today. You can be part of a faith-filled community that is Bible-based and Spirit-filled. You can be. You can come and hear about your purpose, your destiny, and the plan God has for your life. You can come and be light. You can come and be salt. You can come and be an overcomer. You can be an ambassador and a witness for Jesus Christ. You can come and be a role model and an example that goes way beyond your own years. 
You can know assurance and be, have confidence in God that what He promised you, He will do. You can be a servant of God and serve the Lord. doesn't matter where you're from, who you are. We can all serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You can have peace with God. You can have joy in your heart and in your spirit, even if you're going through a storm and a crisis. You can know that He is our great provider. You can know healing to your body. You can know uh, uh, blessing and favour from God. You can come into this place and leave it differently than when you came in Jesus' name. These things you can. Is that good? Is you can. Listen, you didn't know it. Faith comes in cans. Because I want to say to you, you see, some of us believe that God can do anything. God can part the Red Sea. God can do this. God can do that. God can pay for this. God can provide for that. God can heal that disease. God can do, God can do anything. But seldom we believe that God can do it through us. I want to tell you, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I've got a message for you today. You can. You can. You can. Say, I can. I can. I can do this. You know, so often we tell ourselves we can't do it. We can't do it. There's so much uh, mental gymnastics goes through our head, isn't there? Don't you? Is, is it just me? Or does this happen to you too? So many things. So many doubts. You know what's that thing? We, we, we don't need more faith, we need less doubt. Well, we, we, we have all these things coming through our minds and that's why scriptures like this, we really need to get them soaked into our spirit so that even let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Wow. So in other words, in Christ, You've got to stop saying negative stuff to yourself. There's enough people saying negative things about you anyway. You don't want to go and add to it. Isn't that right? Am I speaking sense here? So the, what does the Bible tell you about you? What does God say about you? God believes in you. God believes in you. And the problem you see with religion is, 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 is that it's empty, it doesn't bring the life of Christ in you. Only a living relationship can do that. I want to say to somebody today, that the deeper your valley, the higher your mountain. Somebody here today is in a deep, 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 deep valley. God is going to lift you up. Hey, God is going to lift you up. God is going to lift you up. Somebody isn't going to come and do it. Stop waiting for somebody. Stop waiting for a Father Christmas to arrive six months early. Stop waiting for somebody to come and do something for you and have a sugar daddy come along and help you. God is going to lift you up. The Lord is my helper. Who? The Lord. Now, yes, the Lord uses people, and very often he does, but ultimately he is our source. The Lord said to Abraham in, in, in Genesis 15, verse 1, he says, Fear not, Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. So, in other words, if you start looking to him, if you start looking to God, you see, this is, this is anti religious teaching. Because it's all in a person. And, and God wanted to say it's not in the things, it's in the person. Let me tell you a story. Everybody heard of the Taj Mahal? It's one of the new seven wonders of the world. It's probably the biggest mausoleum ever built. It was built in 1631. It took 22 years to build. And it was built by a, a ruler called... Um, Shah Jahan. 
It's hard to say that. It's hard to, you need your teeth in to say that. Ha 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 his favourite wife died, and he was—he oh, was absolutely loved her so much. He said, "I'm going to build this building." And do you know what he did? He put the coffin in a room, and he built the palace around the coffin of his dead wife. Sometime into the building, he said, "What's that dusty box doing?" He said, "Get rid of it." He got rid of it. Sometime later he found out it was the coffin of his wife. Seriously. And this speaks to me so much of religion. It's all built around a dead person. You get the picture? Well, I want to tell you, religion is built out of deadness and decay. Christianity is not built around a dead person, right? Christianity is built around somebody who died and rose again. It's built around somebody who is alive. It's built around life, not death. It's built around restoration and not destruction. It's built around positivity, not negativity. Because there's a life flow in the faith of the living Lord Jesus Christ. Get it? Get the picture. So it's not like this thing that we're building around somebody who died. We're not building around somebody who something something that we're around somebody who died. Jesus said, "I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, because I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of death and hell and of grave, and everything and all authority and power is given unto me." Is that good? That's not religion. That's life-giving flow. That's why it says in the reading, have a look at the reading. Listen to, listen to what it says here. Well, as I was preaching at the nine o'clock service, I, I just really picked up on this and it's like the Lord just, just put this into my heart straight away. Uh, everyone was, verse 43, everyone was filled with awe. Say that word. Three letters. What, what we've done to that word awesomeness? We've made it ordinary, haven't we? Because everything's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I want to tell you, we must not lose the sense of the awesomeness of God. Everyone was filled with awe and wonder at God. If you lose that, you've got religion in its place. If you keep the sense of wonder... I love that hymn. How great thou art. In all the world, there is no one like you. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. Maybe we'll sing it in a moment, Mark. Is that okay with you? Let's just throw the script. Because Jesus is alive. No rustic religion. When church stops being a group of believers and starts to become a community of people, we will start to see things change. You know what the Lord said to me? Put that next slide on. It's my last slide. Do you know what the Lord said to me while I was away? He really put it on my spirit because I'm so desperate to see the church of Jesus Christ branch out and harvest in Jesus' name. And the Lord put on my head, Paul, you will not reach a community until the church becomes a community. Can you put the next slide on, please? Sorry, next one. You will not become... You will not take a community. You have to become a community to reach a community. Do you get that? 
the what it, what it, the community do you know there's a legal definition of community there's a word called cohesiveness it's a legal term it's one of the criteria that makes a community it's when people stick together over something something makes us stick together come on guys look around you how different we all are if you looked around us now you think what have these guys got in common you said it the living reality of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ living in our lives and all that he stands for you know they followed the Apostles doctrine they didn't follow Jesus doctrine because he didn't teach doctrine he got the disciples to teach that he's the chief cornerstone and the foundation upon that they built so it's what the Apostles taught that we are to follow so when you hear people slagging off the Apostles they are on thin ice Because people say Paul said this and it's Paul. Jesus didn't teach that. I want to tell you, Jesus, the apostles followed the master. And they laid down the apostles' doctrine. And if you, if you run off, scale off that one, you haven't got Christianity. You've got some version of it which is actually false. That's faking it. And it says, it says, Everyone was filled with awe, the many wonders. And it goes on to say, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together. Wow. The, the last slide there, uh, Stella, if you can go back on to the Canadian Redwoods. I found out this out a few weeks ago. We were at Paulina's graduation when she was graduating. And somebody came up with this. I thought it was fascinating. But the big Canadian Redwoods. You've, you've seen pictures of them. They can grow more than 300 feet tall. That's, that's a long way up there, guys. You can actually drive through them. There's tunnels in, in, in the base of them. They're so big and wide, the Canadian Redwoods. People go just to see them. They are huge. Anybody seen them? You've seen them. Have you seen them, Jesse? I hope you have. You're from Canada. But it would just be like you not to have seen them because you're from there, you know. But these are just, and I would have thought, I thought to myself, you know, uh, these trees, they must have really deep roots. You know, I, I love nature, I love looking at an oak tree, you would find its roots go right down and that's why it's so solid, it's so secure. And I would have said, right, if, the, if these Canadian red was going straight up there, they... The, the, the 300 feet, the, the, the roots must go down, whoa, at least 100 feet. They don't. In fact, the roots are fairly shallow for the, compared to the size of them. What they do do is they grow horizontally. And the roots connect with the next tree. And that tree connects with the next tree. And that tree connects with... So what you've got is the roots intermingle and become a community of trees, a redwood forest, and boy, it's difficult to uproot them because they're all tied in together. Isn't that fantastic? I thought, what a picture of community in Jesus Christ. What a picture of the, what the church should be like. Because, you know, how many of us take for granted the power cell? Or the power cells? I was thinking about this the other week. And I was, I was, I was, wrote to Delhi, said, Delhi, just pray for us over this. And I brought some reports back to you. And then I often see prayer requests coming in. Do you know, we are so blessed in this church. You can get hold of Delhi. You can get prayer requests to our power cell groups who, whose main thing is to pray and to intercede, pray and intercede. But they are part of a community. They're not just a group. How blessed we are to have them in our community so that we can rely on them when times are tough, when things go wrong that pastor Delhi, can you get the power cell groups to pray and i'll tell you what the power cell groups know how to pray and they know how to push and get things done are we blessed by them or what we, we often bless the the guys up here who, who lead and rightly so but let's hear it for the power cell teams Let's hear, it for the, let's hear it for the prayer warriors who pray for us. So 
some people are praying for us you know some people pray in hours and some people through the night and some people are doing all, all of that stuff they, they have a special gift to do it you know I couldn't do that I'd fall asleep I'm only being honest you know I can't stand around for five minutes Mags will tell you that I get bored in two minutes but but you know it's each to his own and, 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 and what, what I would say is that I'm so grateful to belong to a community of people who look out for one another, who pray for one another, who bless one another continually, wherever we are. That's a community of people who love one another, who break bread together, who do stuff together. And the more that continues, I bless the Lord for our Zest group that Mags runs, for the fusion groups, for all the small groups, the home groups, the cell groups. If you're a cell group leader, a home group leader, bless you. If you're a prayer group leader, all that, that's doing community. You see, if you just do a group in isolation, it's not really that biblical. The church is biblical. That's what's biblical. Community, church, community. It's doing all things. It's doing things together. Together, together is the essence of that. I'm finishing on this thought, so so don't don't worry. I'll, I'll not keep you too much longer. One of my first jobs. I left school when I was 15. I went back on the day of, on my birthday, on my 16th birthday, just to say goodbye. I mean, they wanted to see me, like you know. But I got a job, and and one of the one of the early jobs I got was was I used to mix the mortar for bricklayers and they used to mix the plaster for the plasterers I want to tell you now you better not mix them up done that <laughs> got in trouble I nearly got sacked on my first day and there's three things that you need in the mortar to build your wall you all know this of course sand cement and water if you build it with too much sand not enough cement and little water not going to last if you build it with a little sand and loads of cement well I've done that in the past before I was trying to knock down a wall the other day and it was not coming down why because I built it I put far too much cement in it and I just looked at it I thought it's been there for 20 years this one knock and this thing will come down well I'll tell you now I've never sweated so much for a long time bringing this thing down the mix was really powerful but but you need the right amount of each and I thought about this the sand the cement the wall I thought what a wonderful picture of cohesion in community that God's given us the sand the Lord said to Abraham your seed shall be like the stars of the sky the, the, and the sand of the seashore if you want to be a star, be a star. I'm just a grain of sand, actually. A bit more down to earth. For all those who are down to earth, you're sand, yeah? Some of you want to be stars, that's okay. They're already spent and gone. The, the sand will last. But the, 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 the sand and then the cement, and I, I really do believe that the cement is the Word of God. It's like the Word of God, right? You've got to have that in there to get the thing to, to hold together. And the last thing you need is the water, the Spirit of God. And I want to tell you, Christian, brother, sister, we cannot live this life, not religion, this lifestyle, this life without having God's Word, without having the Spirit of God in our lives, and with us being the grains of sand that we are, Mix that together and I'll tell you what, you can build anything. I believe that's a great picture of the community that the Lord wants us to be. This scripture says, together, verse 44, verse 46, they continued to meet together. They broke bread together. This last slide here, there's no picture of a church service going on there on purpose because it's not about a church service on a Sunday morning I believe it's right to come together on a Sunday for inspiration and instruction but through the week the church should be being community and that's why there's a lot of people eating there isn't there <laughs> it's good to do stuff together 
as a community. Look at it all. That, some of that zest, some of its other things that we've done. There's a there's a student barbecue there. Remember that one, Jesse? And in your back garden? No, it's in it's John and Lizzie's back garden, wasn't it? This is the great. Do you know one of our one of our house groups? I wasn't going to say one of our house groups took over a pub a few weeks ago. The Robin Hood pub. They're amazing, took over that pub. I am, that, that is fantastic. That's church being community. Don't know whether the sheriff of Nottingham was there, but it was just, you know. I, I want, guys, I want us to be more a community than we are an interest group. Lighthouse, please do not become an interest group. Be what God called you to be. Members of a community that love Jesus Christ more than anything. That worship him in spirit and in truth. That we have our values built around the master. And that, that is the message we bring. In fact, the message isn't just what we speak. The message is who we are, where we go. And literally the message is on two legs. You are our letters, known and read of every man you are our ambassadors wherever we go we take the spirit of jesus christ into that area and into that community be the church community and let's see what happens because there will be some awe-inspiring stuff that comes out of that it says when the people learned how to be community it says god added to them daily such I should be saved. Wow. Now, I'm not preaching a formula there. I'm just preaching truth. So let's go out and take it and live it in Jesus' name. Can we stand? Thank you so much for listening again. Bless God. I would pray you'll have a great, great week. Father, we just pray for all of the community here at the Lighthouse. Father, for the church, the local church, he's still the hope of the world. I believe that. And Father, I just pray that you'll take each member and each person and work through them, speak through them, live through them. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. May we always have a sense of being sent and not just an ad hoc sense of life about us, but Lord, help us to just know we're your messengers, we're your ambassadors. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. We love you, Lord. And we do, Lord, look at you with awe and wonder. Praise you, Jesus. Then sings my soul.